Good morning, good morning, good morning. Just waiting for some stuff to come up. I hope you're all good and had a good weekend, refreshing weekend. So, welcome to the cryptocurrency report for today. And I need to find the recording that works best for me. Just Okay, just one second. I need to stop this recording. There's a bit of an issue. Just one second. Suddenly I'm recording locally, not um, globally, which is really not the optimal thing. It's just decided not to be YouTubeable. Okay. okay. Um, file. Just one second. I'm sorry about this. I have to tell it where to go. It's now recording in places where it didn't used to. It used to send stuff to YouTube. Okay. So what's going to happen now is the videos will be loaded later. So welcome to the cryptocurrency report for today, which is the 15th of July, 2019. There are some important things in energy wise coming up. There are some very important things energy wise coming up over the next day or so. And these may create changes. We, one of them was the fact that we have just gone past the 4th of July and Bastille Day. Now, the French don't have that much influence, so Bastille Day is not that important. But the Americans still do. So there are some changes that may have happened. Or that may be in the pipeline. What I can say is the vast majority of people in overseas countries that are at the north of the equator, particularly above the Tropic of Cancer, are really thinking about their holidays, not thinking about the market so much. Now, Bitcoin against the US dollar is heading down towards where we thought it might start to head down to. Uh, it's exceeded the first target, which means it's probably going to the next target, which is 97.28 or 91.38. Now we had a PHG trade on, which was stopped out clearly, no matter whether we see it or not.
I don't know why my other trades tables was not working, but they're coming up now. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> Firefox sometimes works, sometimes Chrome works. I don't know what it is with these computers. They used to work better when they were not so smart. So at the moment we've got Litecoin. That's the only trade on. Um, we really should be. Uh, thinking about Bitcoin, but we're not going to do Bitcoin as close as we would normally want. We're going to go lower. So I can't see any reason why we want to do anything but 91.38. Notice there's higher volume, so there's no need for us to rush into it. Hopefully it's going to tell me file sharing violation. Okay, so we're going to do one here. We're going to do Bitcoin, BTC USD. Twelve thousand five hundred potential. So we have dips to buy down to ninety one zero five, which is a little bit beyond the normal target area, just because that's what Bitcoin likes to do with a stop loss below ninety twenty five. Full stop. We don't have to be in a real hurry. And we shouldn't be surprised to see a six six thousand dollars if that stop is taken out. Now, Bitcoin futures is basically the same thing, only with a couple of extra days missing. So that 9,000 area looks juicy to me. In Bitcoin futures, the target becomes 91.15 or Bitcoin Cash has been dropping its guts and it gets less smelly above $360.
at the moment. It's kind of in the area where I thought it could go to, but I'm not sure you want to touch it full stop me line. We want to see Bitcoin bottom first. Bitcoin gold, we want to see a break down below $26 and head towards $20. As you can see, Ethereum, we were hoping for a happy hunting ground lower down and that did not work. So Ethereum's off the list for the time being. Volume is not terrible, Muriel, yet. Volume is terrible, Muriel, at the moment. There is a little bit of support around about $226, though. Litecoin suffering from the same malady, full stop new line. Entered and stopped out, exclamation mark. Entered and stopped out, exclamation mark, for a loss on the same day. <coughs> that was the 10th of July, but it hadn't appeared. The 10th of July, but it had not appeared on the trade tables for some reason I cannot fathom but other than my own mistake. There's really nothing more to say about Ripple and probably everything else. 
<laughs> Monero appears to be hanging okay, but I don't believe it because it's only showing us the 12th data. But the reality is it's not bad compared to the rest of them, but this could be just a false illusion reality. If you feel like buying something, then it should be Monero. If you feel like selling something and you're wanting to hedge against something, then you should maybe buy Monero and sell the weaker one, full stop new line. We're now talking about Neo Magic, not really. Um, falling down, falling down the hill. This may but not be worthy of your attention until. Eleven dollars. Power Ledger is still busy doing its job at the bottom of the toilet. I don't know why I've gone all scatological today, but anyway, that's the that's the, that's what you have to deal with. Um, Iota also not worth bothering about at this juncture. IOTA is not worth bothering about at this juncture.
Zcash may be down around $81 in a couple of weeks time. That might be interesting. It might be more interesting at $67, who knows. The little rascal Digibyte is still not doing anything much on the weekly charts. Even the daily charts probably look okay compared to everything else, but it's still a mound of rubbish in terms of its ability to get started and do anything that meaningfully makes money. Okay, so right now my computer is doing the spinning wheel of displeasure. There we go. Unknown error. Sorry, please contact support. Support. Who the fuck is support aside from me? Um, sorry for swearing. We're going to do, that's it. We got any left field questions? Seems to be a Eugene free zone. Any crypto questions? All done. A fast webinar is a sometimes good one. A bad webinar can be a long one. Sometimes a good one can be a long one, but who knows, who cares? Um, I'm being a bit silly, but yeah, thank you all for attending. Thanks Rob, have a good one. Hope you had a good weekend and Cryptos and Rob. So let's um, pick this up and hopefully we can get everything else rock and rolling. Uh, cancel. I need to save this. So we'll wait lurking lower. We will lose this one. We will now lose, go back to the big tables. So I upgraded my system and now I cannot get in to get the thing to exploit. It's just annoying. Oh. Welcome to the Forex Speed webinar for today, which actually is a Monday. How do we know it's Monday? Because you're here and you've probably got bleary eyes and you probably actually had a good time over the weekend. And you're probably wondering what the hell are we going to do this week? And we might even do something that is remarkable. We might even do a little bit of a different forecast webinar. which would be interesting. Okay, so we might do a bit of a different forecast. Um, going back to basics tonight, but we'll see what happens. I think it's forecast. I don't think I did a forecast last week. Remind me, please. So welcome to the Forex Speed webinar for Monday, the 15th of July, 2019. And there is no 
recording for this happening. <coughs> no um, transcript. So we have long-term bullhorns warnings in the Aussie. The pound, which is new. Put this down. The pound is new. The Mexican peso and the Kiwi are still on the list. Long-term bullhorns warnings. We have short-term bullhorns warnings in the dollar CAD. We have long-term long bear pause warnings in zilch. We have short-term bear pause warnings in the Aussie dollar, US dollar. So our fascination should be with the Aussie dollar in some respects. Why? Gold's up. Commodities are pretty reasonable. And the Aussie dollar has been enjoying its time in the sun. So let's see if we've got a... We've got no trade in the Aussie dollar, <clears throat> which is kind of sad, really. Stop loss is at 0.6944. Buy a break above 70.30. Stop loss below 69.70. Target 0.7166. Should we buy a break above there? Yeah. AUD USD. Potential. US dollar index. It's a little bit troubled and it's a little bit bubbled. We were thinking maybe 96 would be the area. I don't think I've put a trade on here, but we do have some Euro um, stuff going on. Let's uh, look to that. Still no good. Um, this is yesterday's. Maybe we do a break above 1.2, 1295. The dollar yen we've seen the rally now we see the problems it's come back to where it should have and we're short with a stop above 109 we are happy in some ways and unhappy in others we are making money but we are always nervous when we're making money aren't we 108.8 should, should be the new stop loss We also have achieved this target. We've taken some profit, which is pleasing. And so we can bring this down to break even, probably. 108.7 just for the hell of it. Now, where's the next target? The next target would be 107.5. Now the pound, we wanted to buy a break above 1.2580. The pound we're going to look at, and we've seen that we have gone long. No, we haven't. <coughs> so we'll keep those things. We're making some money in the Aussie, sorry. Uh, we'll make some money in the Aussie. We're making some money in the yen. Uh, the euro, same, got to wait. And these are all, these are kind of semi-correlated trades. So we'll work with that. 
how is everybody hearing and seeing? Interesting. Now I've got YouTube live. Really? Next cab off the rack is the Kiwi. Kiwi showing some signs of goodness as well. If you're in love with the Kiwi, have a 0.6598 stop loss. We haven't looked at the Aussie Kiwi for some time. <laughs> It's not done anything for quite some time either, but still not a, not bad. Aussie dollar cad, dollar cad plumbing new depths, needs a break up above 1.3070. Um, nothing much else to say, but it's still strong, the Canada. Uh, Swissy. Swissy still showing signs of US dollar weakness to come. Now I have to make a decision about the dollar index seriously because this is the big trade and we did think about selling it there. We didn't do it, but we've got kind of a basket of dollar index based trades anyway for the yen and the other one. So let's not play there. Oh, that's much better not wearing glasses at this computer. Okay, <clears throat> let's play commodities. Commodities. Welcome to the Commodities Speed Webinar for Monday the 15th of July 2019 and here is our disclaimer and warning. We have long-term bull horns warnings in cotton, copper, heating oil, orange juice, natural gas. We have short-term bull horns warnings in lumber, uh, corn, cocoa, euro dollar, gold, Five year notes, 10 year notes. We have short term bear pause warnings in crude oil, feeder cattle, live cattle, gold, Goldman Sachs index, natural gas, RBOB gasoline, and um, so that's interesting. Gold, short term bears, long term bulls, copper, gold, heating oil, and orange juice. So Baltic dry index. Still chunking along. This is not the sign of a real trade war. This is not the sign of a real trade war. It's bogus. Chinese iron ore forming a little triangle, forming a little beak should go higher. Uh, uranium still groveling, not really doing anything. Pleased to see it's not doing anything. 24.4 is okay. It's probably a controlled market in some ways, this not freely traded. Now we see here crude oil got up to the high and really didn't turn down, so nothing to think about other, other than maybe it's still okay strong. Heating oil, same deal. Natural gas. Usually this time of year it's not bad. RBOB gasoline walking its way up. 30-year bonds come back down into the retracement area. So if you are short, suggest making some profit-taking moves. Bank some cash, we'll get another rally up to at least 155, maybe higher. T 
10 year notes. Let's see if they are confirming what we believe. Yes, notice the 10 year notes are not as weak as the 30 year bonds. So the 10 year notes are strong and it's kind of the leader these days. Corn looking for 468 on the top side. Soybean oil looking for 29.18 on the top side. Soy meal. 322 is the target. Uh, stop would be below 310. Soybeans. Looking for 952. Now we had a belief that this would be okay, but I don't think we've kept the trades, have we? Let's have a look. <coughs> Uh, soy meal, we're long, <clears throat> stop is at 2.99, so corn, soy, soybean, so, so let's look at soy meal and I apologise, I do think soybean was pretty good, um, we didn't move anything, so we can move the stop up to 307.8, which means we're not quite... that bad and uh, good. Let's check wheat, the last of the grains. <coughs> Sorry for coughing. Wheats are kind of okay too. Gold. Gold still in that triangle. A, B, C, D. We should get a triangle. E, off we go to the top side, even though there's a short term bear pause warnings. Uh, copper. Copper still not fulfilling my fantasies. Nickel, flatlining and irritating. Palladium, rolling over the cliff and I don't think we put the orders on. I think we might have gotten moofed on those but if we had held it and had a million point stop we would have been a lot better off. But at the moment, platinum is failing. I was right but the trader lost money. So now let's see where we can get to. It got up to where it should have, but I think it probably could have got up, could get up to 1570. So let's try off again on platinum. Stop above 1635, target 1250, potential. Did I do platinum or did I do, yeah. Morning Raymond. Okay, so we're gonna do platinum, which is probably just all over the place. <clears throat> yep, still all over the place, but with potential up to 871. Silver. $15.40, stop loss at $15.13. Um, <clears throat> silver's kind of okay, but it's still kind of really shitting me. Cocoa, cocoa, stair step, still doing the stair step. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's buy a break above 25.2.
potential potential good to see you coming in Raymond enjoy that um, now next one is um, to, 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 to the um, cotton is always looked a bit slumpish still slumping <clears throat> looking down to 60 should be short shouldn't we but really uh, so it gets harder and harder in this section this one's the best section to go for these are two sections so it's kind of like a groveling fourth wave with a triangle it's a flat it's a descender so <clears throat> it should go probably the distance between 70 and 64.5 so call that 5.5 .5. <clears throat> around about this area here is perfect maybe a little bit lower than that target at 59.9 coffee <clears throat> you'll notice my memory is getting better and my thinking is getting clearer uh, it's a, and I'm noticing that too so this little triangle here is moving down towards 96 probably so we don't have a coffee on do we we are waiting for 104. We haven't been there yet. Um, I'm going to cancel this one. <clears throat> okay, so cancelled. I'm just not going to sit there getting shot at like a stupid little black duck. <clears throat> Poor black duck. We'll wait for some more destruction in coffee. Sugar or some signs of life. Sugar is moving its way down a little bit lower, down the bottom of the base. Let's not be interested. Orange juice, <clears throat> put some flags on. The next decline, we should be interested in this. Maybe it's at 91.3, maybe it's lower than that, but uh, we should be interested. Lumber, now lumber, if we remember correctly, has a few different versions of it, self. There's lump, the short-term bullhorns warnings at the moment. It's on, okay. And notice that we thought that we'd come back down to maybe an old top around here, but looking for 334.8. I don't know what happened with lumber supply, but suddenly it's back on. Who knows? Who knows? Now let's pick this up and step it up into the world of speed webinar transcript so what I'm going to say to you may surprise you but welcome to the world indices Monday 15th of July thingamajiggy speed webinar for and here's our disclaimer and warning <coughs> And we have short-term bear pause warnings in 835 US OEX stocks. We have E-mini S&P, we have Italian MIB, we have S&P futures, we have S&P growth index, we have S&P value index, all on long-term bear pause warnings, not just short-term. Now we have 89 OEX stocks with a 10 to one, not as big as the last one we had for 10 bears to 10 to one bull. Sorry, 10 balls to one bear. What am I talking about? Yeah, 10 bears to one ball. Yep, I am talking the right stuff here. Um, meanwhile, back at the ranch, we've probably been stopped out on our E-mini S&P position and possibly on the um, the other one. We've sold, we're looking to sell at one half at 30, 50, 30 24 and or a break below 29.73, we've got filled at 29.82, and then we started to feel like dumb. At least I felt dumb, giving you that order. Um, sadly, not much we can do about it, but <clears throat> the Dow Transports woke up, we thought it was actually not doing that well.
I still get the shits with central bankers doing this low interest rate gig because it doesn't solve anything. All it does is hurt people who've saved. So the Dow transportation average has got um, reached its old top. It's closed just below the old top. There's a bit of resistance. When we look at the chart, it kind of came down to where it could, should have and looking for 10,860, full stop new line. The Dow Jones Industrial Average doesn't care about anything that we believe in, full stop new line. Truth, justice and the American way. It's just boomed, probably on OK volume and it's trending up. The best we could hope for at the moment is a retracement back down to 27,002. When we look back through time, we see historic new highs. When we look at the old line from the prior tops in 2018, January, and 2018, October, we see a return line. That return line may or may not hold it. The question is, if it holds, what happens? Full stop your line. At the moment, we'd have to think that it won't hold it because they're just juicing it too hard. <clears throat> on the monthly basis, a return back down the hill would be getting below 26,666. The NASDAQ continues to pump it up, looking towards 79.51 and 80.21 on the top side. Just one second.
Now the S and P cash index. Now the S and P cash index also made new highs. And some of that work indicates it could be an irregular B wave correction, not a new trend. You'll notice in terms of strength, the Dow is stronger than the S&P because it's right on the return line. The S&P has not managed to get to that return line. There's a few things that I noticed while talking to Newcastle ATAA on Saturday and I will be, if I'm due for doing a forecast webinar tonight, that's what I'll be looking at and showing you what I found out. <clears throat> Let me know whether I'm supposed to do one. I think I didn't do one last week. Mark saying, I think we're due for one, and the answer is yes, probably. So I'll, I'll present what I found out, or what I, it's, it's some simple stuff, which is quite annoying for me to deal with emotionally. <clears throat> Now the volatility index continues to grovel. Needs to get above 14 to shake it out of its stupidity, new line. <coughs> the E-mini S&P has stopped us out of our PHG trade. <clears throat> we did put an order on to hopefully get out if it dipped lower. And I'm not sure if I did that on Friday or on Wednesday. Or on Wednesday. I think it was Friday and we'll have a look at Wednesday's trade table just to prove. I realized I can do that. My brain started to work again. And bum, 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 bum. yeah, exit one down to twenty nine ninety four. So we got out. Yippee! So that was filled. Okay, so we feel a bit better. <clears throat> now we've been sopped out, so we're going to go duplicate and we were only on one third so stopped out exclamation mark for a loss so that's not as bad as we thought so here we're going to go 30 24 we're only going to sell one third because I'm scared we're going to have a stop at 30 45 because I'm scared and <clears throat> 
potential. Okay, <clears throat> and we'll talk about this maybe in the forecast. So we did get out at 29.94 on the one third position we had on, which is a bit of a relief. The E-mini S&P floor session internals, they had a good session. There probably wasn't a lot of juice in there for making money, but they, if they held the ground, they would have been fine. Best thing I can say is they pushed it down a little bit, so they'll probably push it up today and see if they can get some stops. The German DAX looking down towards 12,620 on the downside, sorry, 12,260. If it gets down there, maybe you'd think about buying it. At the moment, I'd say they're probably keen to be pushing it a bit higher today. The Euro stocks 50. It gets better above 35.20. The moment, look for 34.30 or lower. The Italian MIB, kind of flipping around, could hit 22,320, could go down to 21,755. I wish I had a very strong opinion on this, but I don't. The Shanghai A shares index. There's a big beat up on China treatment of the Islamic Uyghur nation in the west of China. Look at them, they are very ethnically Middle Eastern and if you look at what they write, they write in Arabic. They are not Chinese and somehow they are being treated to being like Chinese, full stop in line. If you read George Orwell's book, 1984, you probably get a good feeling for how China wants to run its country, full stop in line. America completely and honestly needs to develop its own manufacturing base, as does Australia, in the event that China wants to just take over the world. Full stop. Economically, they did that. But unfortunately, the economy is not working so well in China now. So they may be forced to take military action to get their needs met. Their country is getting less polluted, which is really good, but they still have lots of people to deal with. <clears throat> Hong Kong Hang Seng. This probably will go up today towards 28,800. Japanese Nikkei. We have a target at 21,860. And maybe 22,000. 
239. It's been holding up despite the fact that everything else is not that great. Australian share price index futures has been ignoring the rest of America or at least the American indexes and what we are seeing is not the same as America for some reason. It can still go down to 64.91 and it can still go up to 67.47. I would be happy to see either effectively. On the share price index internals, we see this backing away during the normal session while the US market had a good session, full stop new line. So there must be something underlying this. Let's have a look at BHP in the US and, B and Rio in the US. And we see that BHP was acting weekly in a weak fashion, but not on high volume yesterday or on Friday. Rio looking down towards $101 and $1, one cent on a higher volume than BHP. So it's probably the weakest link. Okay, um, next cab on the rank is the stock market for Australia, probably at 8.45. See how I go, I've got to cook something, eat something. But yeah, thank you all for attending. Hope you're good and talk to you in the Aussie Delero, or the Aussie ASX section. Cheers, bye.